Hi and welcome back to the channel. Today, as if you hadn't guessed, I'm going to be building a Pacific Sherman. This is the kit I'm going to be using, which is quite an old kit from Tamiya. The kit includes one set of markings for a tank which fought in the Philippines, classy peg, but I'm going to make in a few modifications to it. So one thing you'll see in historic photos is that many Pacific Shermans had camouflage schemes, which is a bit more interesting than the regular olive drab that a lot of the European Shermans had. So I'm going to be representing that with a four colour scheme. Improvised armour was also very commonly added by Sherman crews. In the Pacific in particular, these wooden planks on the side of the hull seem really common, so I'm going to be adding some of those as well. And you'll notice that in several of these photos here, spare track links have been welded to the side of the turret to provide additional protection. And because there's lots of spare parts in the box, I'll be able to add those quite easily. Now one thing which seems quite unique to the Pacific Shermans is metal spikes. I think sometimes even just nails, which are welded to the top of the tank's hatches to discourage Japanese from climbing on board and from disabling the tank with explosives or grenades. You can just see those in this picture here. And then finally I found a couple of photos of Shermans where the crew have added steel sheets to the side to provide kind of improvised armour skirts. So I'm going to be trying to add some of those as well. Now one of the great things about this kit is because it's been reboxed and re-released so many times, it's got lots and lots of spare parts. Uh, it's got three options for the road wheels, it's got lots of extra stowage, and it has lots of spare track links I can use for the armour as well. And in fact, these spare items here are from just one set of the sprues. Each of these sprues is duplicated, so I've got twice as many pieces of stowage as you can see here. And the decals also have this nice little K-ration label for the boxes, which is a, a nice little touch. Okay, so on with the construction. So because this is quite an old kit, there are a few little oddities such as these small gaps here, which I'm going to need to fill later. These are even shown in the instructions, but they need to be covered up.
And again, because this is an old kit, there are no flaws to the sponsons, which isn't a problem if the Sherman is built with the hatches closed. But if I'm going to model it with them open, it means when we look down into the tank, you can see the ground through the tank. And I don't want that. So I'm going to make some simple flaws from Styrene Sheet. Now it's time to add the wooden side armour. These are just cheap wooden sticks that I got from an art store. I've just cut off the rounded ends. I decided not to make the planks match the shape of the hull exactly at the back because I wanted a little bit of a, a sort of makeshift appearance. So to make the metal spikes on top of the hatches, originally I considered using some pieces of wire, but actually when you look at it next to the vehicle it looks a little bit too big, it's, it's not quite in scale. So what I decided to use instead was some stretched sprue, and I just cut it into short lengths. And if we imagine that each of these is a 6 inch nail, that's 152 millimeters, uh, divided by 35 gives us just over 4 millimeters for each one. This was the most delicate part of the process and I just used super glue to attach the spikes. It doesn't matter if there's a little bit of a mess around the bottom because that can just represent sort of uh, weld marks and so on. For the side skirts I went for some small rectangles of 0.5mm styrene 
and I just used a thin strip behind them to attach them together and attach them to the bogies. And the bolt heads I've added here were grabbed from the spare parts box. They're a little bit out of scale, but I think they look just about okay. To make the side armor look a little bit more realistic, I added some weld seams. And the easy way to do this is to use some more stretch sprue, just cut it to length, and then soften it with some Tamiya Extra Thin. And once it's softened for a minute or two, you can just use the back of a knife blade just to push up into the sprue and to make the weld marks. For the camouflage scheme, most of the sources I've seen suggested a sort of green base with a, a red brown, a sandy yellow and a black over the top. But I really didn't want this to turn out looking like a standard German three colour camo scheme. So I tried to avoid the XF60 dark yellow which I'd use for that and the NATO green which I'd use for that as well. Um, in the end I decided on XF81 which is dark green 2 RAF, XF68 which is NATO brown and instead of pure black I went for XF85 which is rubber black and then for the yellow I used a mix of XF57 buff and XF3 yellow and I just mixed it by eye so when I applied the camera scheme I focused on the front and the sides of the tank it seems that most Pacific Shermans are quite heavily laid into stowage and to be honest I don't think the camo was painted on top anyway because I think air attack wasn't really a major threat.
For these side skirts, originally I was going to paint them in a steel colour and just sort of weather that, but then I decided to heavily rust them instead. So once the steel base colour was down, I just sponged on three or four red, brown, orange paints, just mottling them on to get a nice effect. I think it came out quite nicely.
needed an oil dot filter to break up the uniformity of the paintwork. And then finally I added a mix of burnt umber and raw sienna oil paints in various ratios, thinned heavily, just to simulate general dirt and grime across the tank.
As always, at this stage, I haven't added any mud or dust effects. It's my usual excuse. I am going to add this tank to a diorama at some point in the future, and I want the tank and the diorama to blend in together. So I will do all the final weathering at that later stage. And this is the final result. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm quite pleased with the final result and I really enjoyed creating the various additions for the tank. I think it makes it stand out a little bit from a out of the box build. If you like the video, then do please remember to hit the thumbs up button below and subscribe if you would like to see more videos like this in the future. Thank you for watching.